interpretations, and that's okay, all right? I do not intend to step on anyone's toes, okay? So if you have just done things differently, can we just all like set that aside and just agree to learn? Is that okay? You, you apply it however you want to apply it. You do with it what you feel like you need to do with it. I'm just going to tell you what I've uncovered, uncovered in my two and a half years of building um, and what I've learned, okay? Um, so my name is Erin Rogers. I am a dog of Young Living, and I'm going to talk to us about structure for financial success. I'm going to unpack a couple of things on the way to get into the structure part of this chat. Um, I'll tell, take just a minute to tell you a little bit about who I am, where I came from, and how I got here, because um, the Lord has blessed me, and I just give Him the glory first, but I also want you guys to understand a little bit of um, how I became a diamond. I still don't totally understand it. Can we all be honest? Uh, I mean, does anybody not understand how they found me on living completely? I didn't get to it through goats, like my sweet friend Tina. <laughs> there are no goats in my life. I'm fascinated by them, but I kill plants, so I'm not going to do goats anytime soon. We'll, we'll get to that. But um, I started, like many of you did, I had a little ones. And things weren't always great at my home with my little ones. And I wanted some tools at my disposal to just help out in my house, right? Can they relate to that? Yep. You're just like, I'm a mom. I should be empowered. I should be able to do this. And I don't want to have to Google everything. Like, I just want to know how to do a few things to take care of my family. We had a few specific things going on that I was, you know, doing my research on. And I stumbled across the concept of essential oils. And I come from a pharmaceutical background. I was a pharmaceutical rep for six years. I call that my prior life, and we're not going to judge me for it or anything, okay? Um, I learned a lot in that time about that industry, have massive, massive respect for the medical industry in many areas, okay? Um, my husband's family is all doctors, have a lot of respect for that. I just also want to have my own knowledge, okay? I'm big on that. I'm big on empowering mamas, empowering women, and being able to use our own brains, which are very, very smart. And don't ever let anybody tell you that what you're doing with oils is foolish, okay? Well, don't be foolish with them, but don't let people tell you that. You guys can make choices for the families that are very wise. And so with some littles, I had, um, at the time that I first began looking into oils, I had a three-month-old and about a two-and-a-half-year-old. And, um, you know, again, we had a few things going on at home, and so I started doing some research. Essential oils popped up on my news feed on Facebook, right? Anybody hear about them first on Facebook? Nope. Anyone? I know. You did. <laughs> um, and so I, I was like, that's weird, totally weird, but I will privately do some research on that and see what's going on. Um, and so I did some research. I, I honestly I put on my pharma hat. I've been out of the industry for several years at that point, but what <coughs> ratcheted me out of pharma and into teaching inner city high school math because God's got a sense of humor. And so um, I put on my little teaching hat and I put on my little pharma research hat. I did my research and I found this is kind of legit. Let's see what we can do. And all that research led me to Young Living. I didn't know anybody. I knew no one. Okay. I didn't have a friend who did oils. I didn't have an acquaintance. I didn't know anybody in town. I knew a few crunchy people, but nobody ever mentioned it. I was not going to be weird enough to ask. So um, I just hopped online and I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just sign up. I mean, I can just get this little starter kit thing myself. But I saw that referral number and I knew somebody could benefit. So I waited until I saw someone in a group that I was in online mention Young Living. And I sent this to her PM and said, hey, I've been wanting that kit. Can you just give me your number so I can sign up with you? Would that be okay? She was like, yeah. So I, did. <laughs> and so, um, so I did, and I just kind of was, I was what I call a closet oiler for a couple of months, because my husband is like major skeptic, he's been a major skeptic husband. Mm -hmm. Listen, y'all, I'm here to tell you, my husband is possibly uses more oils a day than I do now, okay? They can totally turn that tide, okay? Get them plugged in with some of the men's groups online, there are some really great ones. Um, but I always joke around that he would leave for work in the morning as soon as I heard the garage door close, or get the fuse around. And I was like, on the kitchen table, and then I'd hear it open, and I would like, oh, wait a minute. And he would go, what's that smell? And I'd be like, just some stuff. And I never really wanted him to know what was going on, because his dad's a doctor, his brother's a doctor, and like, they would think I'm weird. And so I just didn't want to really own it for being a legit thing, and so I just kept it real quiet. Then he went away for a week on business, and it was like, all right. We are getting this thing done. Game's on. Enough to be dangerous. <laughs> and so we got out the lavender and the cedar wood. At this time, I had actually researched oils for six months before I jumped into, like, silently, 
um, I should add. And so still haven't told anybody I'm doing this thing. I'm about two months into like concocting things in my living room while he's at work and then hiding them. And um, so he goes away for a week and my little guy, who at the time was 11 months old, had not yet slept through the night at all. And so, um, so Bronx is gone and I'm like, okay, it is on. And so I oil him up, I get the diffuser going and he slept through the night. And I was like, Praise God. Holy sweet Moses, what is going on? <laughs> I was like, it could be a fluke. And then so I was like, okay, so we're not going to tell anybody because that would be weird. So, um, all right, let's do it again. And the next night, y'all, what happened? Like, right? And I was like, sweet. Like the angels were singing. It was the happiest thing ever. It was, I was like in my place of joy, right? And so I get on Facebook, okay? I get on Facebook and open my mouth, which y'all can tell I like to do that. And so I get on there and I'm like, OMG, Graham slept through the night. This is amazing. Well, apparently I must have been one of those mamas who complained about that. Because <laughs> all my girlfriends were like, what did you do? I don't even know that I told him what. I think I just was like, I found this weird stuff and it's working. And so people messaged me and I sold six kits that day. <laughs> And let me tell you, when I had found my friend online, I'd been like, don't even. Network marketing sucks. I'm not doing it. It's not going to happen. I don't want any part of it. Don't even talk to me about it. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. Six kits in one day. And I was like, oh, shoot, I think i got to figure this out. And I can literally remember sitting in my car one day and just like being on my iPad and going like, copying and pasting the same message to all these people who are asking me the same questions, because it's the same, y'all. It's a lot of the same questions. Once you share that first story, it's really just, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste is what you're doing a lot. And I'm not saying everything needs to be like that, but there comes a time, and this is just, you know, a piece of advice, you need to get your story written out. Because when somebody asks you, like, all right, Erin, tell me, what's the deal? I was, people would say, what's the deal with essential oils? And so I had like a little post. The first post I ever wrote on my blog was called, what's the deal with essential oils? Because <laughs> that was the question I would get. And so I kept it in the notes app on my phone, which if you, you're, if you use Apple, I know um, the other phones have similar systems, but it echoes to my iPad, which echoes to my MacBook. And so like if I updated it, it was everywhere. <coughs> And I could just snag it and paste it, not personalize it, don't get me wrong, but um, you know, I could just do it quickly. I think I want to get one of those kits. Awesome. What did I do? Copy, paste. Like I had it ready to go, right? Um, and so I um, grew a little fast. Um, I had exec in 22 days. Silver, two months. Gold, two months. Platinum, two months. Diamond, four months. It took me 10 months to hit diamond. Um, yeah, tell me about it. It was a little like, woo. Um, so it was amazing. I mean, it's been like the best ride ever. Um, it has been incredible, and I just feel beyond blessed to have met so many wonderful people um, just on this journey. It's been incredible, but my passion is. It actually, Natalie told me early on, the first time I met her, I was thinking about you this morning, and I was like, she's going to be mad if I call her out. But Natalie said to me the first time we met, she said, the Lord gave me this little thing, and I realized that I could just do with it what it is, or I could learn how to cultivate it well and do something for his glory with it. And so that's what I really believe it's all about, okay? You have this thing, whether all it is is knowledge about beauty school, where you just learned a few things this week that you're like, gosh, I just... I feel like there's at least four people in my life who need to hear this, okay? Or if you have a team and you're a leader, you need to take what you have and you need to steward that well. I don't care what your biblical, spiritual perspective is. Do the thing well, okay? Learn it, learn it, apply it, teach it, do it well. If you're not, you're leaving a lot on the table, not just for your own family, but for everybody else who's relying on you to help them with information. Okay, and that goes for product and for business stuff, okay? Don't leave it on the table. This is not all just meant for our own consumption. This is meant for us to share and share wisely, okay? Y'all with me? This is where we're going with this. So now, get ready, okay? We're gonna talk about structure for financial success. So we're gonna dive right in and we're gonna talk about the difference between retail and wholesale. Because when someone wants to get started with Young Living, really they have a couple more options than just these two, okay? And I'll explain what I mean by that. But ultimately, when someone says, hey, Erin, I think I want to try Lemon Lavender and Peppermint, because that's a common trio, um, I have a couple of options of what I'm going to do with that, okay? I can offer to help them set up a retail account where they can buy that product, and they can just order it themselves. And I like to help people, I like to show people how to use that. It familiarizes them with the system. 
so that at least they can get to know how to use online. I think it helps convert them to a wholesale client down the road. Um, the flip side of that is I can price it out to the retail and I can show them the value of the kit and say, you know, in the starter kit, you're gonna get lemon, lavender, and peppermint. You're also gonna get all these other things and that's a, more of a benefit. Now, the third option I'm not really gonna talk about is you can just use your own wholesale discount and pass that on to them. You know, per policies and procedures, we need to raise it by 10% when we pass that discount on to somebody. There's always something that you can do. I don't really find that to be the most helpful. I think you need to empower them with an account, okay? Whether that's a retail account or a wholesale account, that is totally up to you, okay? First option is retail, and I do have order for them on here as well. And I think these are gonna be kind of slow, uh, small, so y'all try and get what you can. Um, I'm used to having a larger screen, so I, I don't think they're too packed, but um, you know what happens with a retail account? They have no diffuser, they have no resource materials because you're probably not providing them with those things. They have no way to reorder without contacting you. That would be if you ordered for them as opposed to them having that retail account. But the bottom line is they have no loyalty. You've done nothing for them they couldn't have done for themselves, right? They could have gone to youngliving.com and set up that account for themselves. You've not really done them any favors. The flip side of that is when we can help them get a wholesale membership and we show them that cost comparison so they can see the difference between buying those oils straight out versus buying those oils with that wholesale membership, you're showing them value and you're honoring them that they can make future good decisions with that wholesale account. You tell them what's required and not required. Listen, I'm not taking your firstborn. I'm not requiring you to make a purchase every month. There's none of that shenanigans going on here. I'm just trying to equip you so that you can place your own orders and do it at a, the way that's financially more beneficial for you. Plus, we want that diffuser, right? They need to have that diffuser. So give them your member ID or a personal link. Do you guys know where the link builder is in um, the virtual office? I'll tell you in case you don't know. Uh, log, log into the virtual office, go to that left-hand menu, on the, so it's like where you would go to dashboard, my organization, quick order, essential rewards, all of that is right there. Click on member resources, it's going to expand that menu within the menu, and the very bottom one is called link builder. If you click on that, it's going to give you a really ugly link, okay? It's really, really long, your member number is going to be embedded in it a couple of times. Um, it's kind of just a nasty link to send to somebody. My trick is we make bit.ly links out of it or any other shortener. There's a Google shortener and tiny URL and some of those. But I'll take that. You get a free bit.ly account. Okay, free. Super free, super easy. They don't like to harass you or anything. And it'll allow you to customize it. So I can take that long, ugly link that has my member number in it a couple of times. I can take it to bit.ly. I can shorten it and then I can customize it. So when somebody says, Erin, I want to get a kit from you, I go, no problem. Bit.ly slash Erin Rogers will set you right up. And they're done. That's it. They don't have to think beyond that. I don't have to remember something long fits right on my business card or right on my brochures. Everything fits just fine. Really quick way to do that. So when somebody messages me and they want that, I can send them right to that link. I get to be the enroller and the supporter for them. I get to equip them to be an advocate for their own wellness and I'm not an order taker. Does anybody really want to be an order taker? No. A couple of months ago, at the end of the month, I was sitting at Panera, just getting a few things done in the evening, and there were some um, jewelry salespeople at the table next to me, and they had a stack of carbon sheets. Like, I didn't know people use those anymore. But like, they were, I guess we're kind of the ones we're using here, come to think of it. But it was like a big stack of those, but they were going through them and like calculating percentages. I was like, sweet mother, I am so glad that I do not have to do that. I'm just so grateful. I get to hook people up with the website and walk away from that. I can just help them with their product and I don't have to take orders and keep track of who gets what and did they PayPal me and all of this business, right? I can move right past that to support them with the product, okay? So wholesale membership is the way to go. How do you get paid? Um, Young Living pays commissions and bonuses on a monthly cycle, so everything you do in a single calendar month is going to get paid out the following calendar month on or about what day? 20th. 20th, okay? Sometimes it's the 19th because of a weekend or what? I mean, you know, it's the 20th. You can log in and see your check online. I believe now everybody is available to get direct deposit, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay, so if you at all are sharing oils with people, y'all just need to log in. Same VO menu at the bottom, you're going to see your profile. 
or your account uh, is the very bottom one, and through there you can actually sign up for direct deposit, and you can get that um, really easy set up. Okay, so you need to do that. Um, every single month you spend 50 PV, you are eligible for bonuses. I'll clarify what those are in a second. And every single month you spend 100 PV, you are eligible for commissions. So the 50 PV, you are eligible for two bonuses, the Start Living bonus and the Fast Start bonus. Both of those are tied to the what? Premium Starter Kit. Okay, Premium Starter Kit is a $50 bonus that they just walk out the door with the Premium Starter Kit. Whether we're talking oils, thieves, or nature, if they just walk out the door with that item, they will. you will get a $25 Start Living bonus if you're the enroller. And you'll get 25% of the PV, which the PV on those kits is 100, and 25% of 100 is 25. So I've got $25 start living, $25 fast start bonus. Together they become what we tend to refer to as the kit bonus. Okay, technically it's two separate things that become the one thing. Y'all call me on that? Yes. Okay, um, it can be kind of confusing at first because you can actually end up getting more on those initial starter kits if that person adds things to their order. That fast start, that 25%, you get paid on all the PV of their order. So it's possible to get the 25 start living and then you know, a really large amount of fast start if you're great at explaining additional products to them. Every single month you spend 100 PV, you are eligible for commissions. That would be your unit level commissions that get paid out on your first five levels. I'm not gonna explain that today, okay? Um, there are a million videos, and I'm sure most of your uplines have some great resources for you guys on unit level commission. I'm just not gonna dissect all that today, okay? That is your 8%, 5%, 4%, 4%, and 4% that you get on those first five levels. If, if that means anything to you, it doesn't just disregard. Um, the uh, next thing that you're eligible for with 100 PV is the Rising Star Bonus. Now, I'm a little asterisk there because it requires you to be doing 100 PV on ER, okay? It's the only piece of the compensation plan that does require that your monthly order is paid, placed through the Essential Reward System. Now, how many of you are on ER? Okay, right? Like, we know it's kind of a good deal. They've sort of just made it a ridiculous deal. So, clearly it makes sense. But some of your brand new builders are not necessarily going to be ready for that. And that's okay. Keep explaining the benefits. But just realize this rising star bonus is only eligible to people who are doing 100 PV on ER. Now, let's talk about that. Can y'all read this? <laughs> um, we're talking money. So we're going to talk about the income disclosure. Now, just an FYI side on this. Anytime you talk money, you do need to show the income disclosure. Okay, that is part of policies and procedures. So anytime you're mentioning money to your team, just include a link to it. You don't have to display it. Make sure there's a link um, on a Facebook post so that they can go get some more information if they want to. But this is the income disclosure. So I am showing that to you. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Even that, I know you're not going to be able to see a whole lot. But this is just cropping in on that center graph sort of area and so you do need to familiarize yourself with this this is a really important piece of literature that we've been given for now living and they just updated it and it's even more fun because it tells us a whole lot more so now we can look at the ranks for young living all the way from member to royal crown the average hours worked per week how many distributors in all of young living make up those ranks and then monthly income the lowest paid person at that rank last year the highest and then we have both median and average, which the math geek in me would love to dissect, but we're just not going to go there. There's a difference between median and average. Um, they tend to be middle-ish numbers. We'll just leave it there. Um, and then the average income based on the average from this particular column. And then right here, you see the months to achieve that rank, okay? The low, the average, and the high for that, okay? So here's why I show you this. Legally, I have to, but also because I want you guys to think through. This is really important. If you have not spent time with this document, you can get it online. Um, if you Google, just FYI, if you Google Young Living Income Disclosure, it'll always pop up as like the very first link there. So you can always just grab that link direct to the website there. Um, this is a really important document because this document helps us understand what our potential is. And if we don't understand what our potential is or what we, we might be working towards, then we don't know where we're going. And, if, and it's not all this, don't get me wrong. I, I'm teaching business today, so we're, we're talking about the money piece. There's a whole lot more to this whole thing than just the income in terms of dollars. I think we've all found different forms of wellness. Relationships have been a huge thing <coughs> in Young Living. 
um, as well as all the opportunities that I've had to give back to people over the last few years have just been mind blowing. But we're just gonna talk about this because let's be honest, our brain and bills, sometimes when you just start sitting down with them and you go, are you struggling with paying a mortgage? Because I feel like you are. So let's talk about that. You're gonna hit that nerve where they're gonna go, you know what, you're right, my husband lost his job last week or we know he's gonna lose his job in a few weeks and money is tight. It's not necessarily about what gift can I give to someone right now? Sometimes it literally is about the food on the table, okay? So there is a time and a place to sit down with some people and just talk money. It's okay, all right? Don't be weird about it. Oh, don't get weird. I mean, I'll tell you I'll be weird about it. But there's a time and a place, but if you don't understand this, then you can't help them with that, okay? Now, um, one of the things that I do with people is I, anytime I do a business class, I always hand it out. I print it out and hand it out so that everybody has it. Um, and I just ask them, even if they've come to a business class before, I want you to look at it. I just want you to dream for a minute. And I also just want you to think. So there's the dream. We all want to dream of Royal Crown right now. But I want you to think, too, of like just what would change my life. Okay? What would change my life? You have you know, the executive income of average of 549 months. I mean, that is car payments, mortgage, and lots of other things to people. That will change a life in a big, big way, okay? So slide that document over to someone and talk to them. Let them dream. Let them dream about the Royal Crown average of 141000 a month. Let them dream about that. I mean, that's kind of a fun dream to have. What would you, what could you do with that kind of a blessing in your life? But regardless, let them think through what it could be and tell them stories of people you know, okay? My team and I were just talking last night. We rented a big house and we were hanging out and those who lasted past the late night gaming um, stayed up and we were talking about um, just what it meant when I brought my husband home in February when he retired from being an attorney and working at a credit union. Um, he got to come home and he got to, he's like with my kids right now. They sent me this like, mommy, we love you. You're going to do awesome. Like they sent me this video this morning um, and he just gets to know his babies and my team sees that and that's been really neat. And several of them said to me, they said, I'm looking at you. Several of them said to me, like, I didn't think it was real. But when you did that, I realized this is real. Okay? And it doesn't always take that. If you don't have a diamond or someone to look up to in your direct team to have that, you still have stories of amazing success around you. So empower your team with those stories. If you don't know anyone who has a story, you look, because there are a lot of us with stories, and you can be encouraged and you can be empowered by all of us, okay? Um, but I love to, to show people this to give them an idea of what could be so they can think about what might be because they need to decide what their goal is. And once I know what their goal is, of course, knowing their goal and having a real conversation with them about why that's their goal, why it might be their true, like, I need this goal versus their, like, wow, that would be amazing kind of dream. Um, it just helps me understand where they're coming from, where their sense of urgency is, where that need is, and where I can just love on them in that specific way. So I always ask myself what my goal is, and then I ask them the same thing. Okay, I'm not, though I wouldn't necessarily have that open conversation with a brand new builder about, like, my dream of the Royal Crown, but, um, but it is a great conversation to have, okay? Um, so what is your goal? Here's the deal. Your structure, the way that you build your team can get you to your goal, okay? Can get you to your goal. I have a really good friend who um, told me that when she was first building, she said, um, you know, I would really love to be a gold leader. I feel like if I could be a gold leader, like that would totally change my family. And so she structured herself in a way to hit gold. And she hit gold, and she's a phenomenal gold leader. And then she realized she wanted to go past that. But because she had structured herself in that way, it sort of held her in place for a while. Does that make sense? Okay, because when you build gold, you build three legs. Okay, we'll get into that in a second. All right, so your structure can actually keep you at your goal. That's not good, right? You don't want to set that goal to silver. I see this happen a lot. Um, I just want to be silver. If I can be silver, I want to be a life changer. And then they get to silver, and they're like, I really want to be gold. And you're like, well, maybe you shouldn't have like stacked your teams crazy like this. And so I don't recommend that. I recommend that you think with that long term in mind, long term in mind, okay? One of the things I love to say is slow to silver, fast to diamond, okay? Because when you build that structure out nice and wide, which I'm about to talk about, um, it helps you do that. So that's the whole thing. Your structure can help you get to your goal and set you up for the next ranks. 
okay? So planning wise from the start can help you get to what that need goal is, that thing that makes your person go, we need to pay the mortgage, or my kid is being um, treated poorly in the school situation, I need to be able to quit my part-time job and come home and homeschool, okay? What's that need? But we don't want them to have to stop at the need. We want to prepare them so that they can push through that need and get to their long-term goal as well. Y'all with me? Okay. All right. So structure is a numbers game. It's, it's just really what it is when it comes down to it. It's totally a numbers game and it's all about legs. How many of you understand legs? <laughs> Okay, okay, I know those of you who don't, I'm not going to leave you hanging, so don't worry about it, okay? All right, so legs, in the just rawest form of a leg, your legs are people who have you as their sponsor, okay? When I sign up a friend, they sign up under me, they stay connected to me, they sign up under me, I'm both their enroller and their sponsor, they're on my first leg. I always tell people it looks like a family tree, okay? Your legs are your kids, okay? They're the people who are just directly right beneath you. If you have two legs, you could have 15 legs, you could have 147 legs. I don't particularly recommend that, but you can have as many legs as you want to have legs. Now, the Young Living Compensation Plan was written in such a way that we actually had the chance to move people within the first 20 days. So if I were to, let's say as I did, enroll six people that first day, and several of them were really good friends, okay? And I chose, instead of leaving them all as direct legs, I chose to change sponsors and shift some to be under each other because we all had the same friends. So I wanted us to be able to have a, a mutually beneficial relationship and work together and host classes together, not have anyone feel this awkwardness like, well, I invited her. I mean, I know y'all have been friends longer, but like, she came because I invited her, and that's, I just don't, you know, I didn't want any of that to happen. So we structured in a way, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Um, but those legs are those people that you keep directly under to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, they could be people that you have enrolled yourself and kept on that level, which is called your level one, that child level. Okay, your grandchild level would be your level two. The great grandchildren, three levels down. You follow me on that? I just, Family tree makes sense. Does that make sense to y'all? Yes. It makes way, way sense to me. So my legs are my kids. I've enrolled in myself and kept them on my level one. Or it could be a member that one of your upline leaders may be shifted under you to put people in common with each other. Okay? Because that happens. I've never had it happen to me. Not a lot of people do. If you did, congratulations. That's fantastic. Okay? But your legs are your people directly under you. The number of legs, the number of groupings of family generations that you have under you determine your rank, okay? They determine, uh, and the volume has to be at a certain level for each one of them, as well as your overall OGB has to be in a certain place, okay? Not gonna dive into a ton of that. Again, that's some like comp plan stuff that you guys can probably find from your upline, what the qualifications are for each rank. We're just gonna talk through some basics. The structure for Royal Crown Diamond requires you to have seven lives, okay? Um, some of you are like, wait, I thought you only needed six. Can we talk about that? Okay. So, Royal Crown Diamond requires you to have six legs plus PGB. PGB stands for? Personal group volume. Personal group volume. Okay. Personal group volume is basically you and everybody outside your qualifying legs. Basically, what Young Living did is they said, when you hit silver, we don't want you to just have two legs that are growing. We want you to be growing another one because we don't want you to stop either. So you need to have some personal group volume going on out here so that you can add that third leg to gold. But when you get to gold, do you need that PGB again? Yeah. You yeah. sure do. You need another thousand out here working. So it keeps you from just stalling out in one place. The comp plan is built to require you to keep building that width. Now, I don't recommend that you get to a leg and then start figuring out the next one. And then I'm not going to teach you how to do that, okay? I'm going to teach you how to structure it a little bit better from the front. But because of that PGB piece, and it's only ever a thousand, even up to Royal Crown, that number never gets bigger. You have to have a thousand PGB at silver, thousand PGB at gold, at platinum, at diamond, at crown, and at royal. Okay, it's always the same. Technically, that could be your order. Not many of us are in the position where we could be the one ordering the thousand. We're going to call it a set of leg for that case. Okay. okay. The best setup for your structure is the rising star bonus. How many of you feel confident with the rising star bonus? That's kind of what I thought. Okay, I'm gonna teach it to you today, okay? This is how I teach my team to build, and this is how you guys are gonna be set up for the best success. 
moving forward, okay? Now remember, even if you're going, Erin, you lost me, I just came to this for a facial. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something, and if you can let it sit on you, or you can impart it on someone else, right? Okay, so there may be someone in your life who needs this and needs what Young Living can offer, even if you don't think you do, okay? So even if I've lost you because you're like, I don't care about the business piece of things, I don't want to talk about it, I just, I still want you to listen with an open mind because there very, very well may be someone in your life that you can go home to and go, I don't even know that I'm doing this, but I just feel like you need to be doing this. And I want you to be listening for that, okay? All right, so Rising Star Bonus. Here's the requirements for Rising Star. You, to earn the Rising Star Bonus, must be doing 100 PV on ER. That was what I said earlier, remember? It's the only part of the comp plan that requires that ER volume. The top of your legs, remember those are the people, those are your kids. The top of your legs, they each must be doing 100 PV on ER. Okay, now let's talk about that for a second, right? It takes a little while sometimes to get everybody turned over onto ER to see the benefit in that, okay? So I don't want you to go, Erin, listen, this one person at the top of my one leg, she will knock it on ER, and that means I can't do Rising Star, and yada, no, we're not doing that, okay? The structure of Rising Star is what I want you guys to understand is extremely important. There are bonuses tied to this. I want every single one of you to be hitting the Rising Star bonus, but even if you're not, I want you to have the structure in place. So if that person at the top is not doing what they need to be doing, you just gotta deal with it, okay? You gotta get over it, you gotta move past it and focus on your structure. Don't get hung up and talk yourself out of attempting any of it just because of the one person. Okay? We all got a one person. Okay? We all got a one person. All right? Um, and I'll tell you, Rising Star Bonus is a complicated setup. So it's, it, it, it's totally doable, but it is unusual that, like, everybody in your whole team is going to be set up for Rising Star. Okay? I'm just talking about you, what you need to be doing, how you need to be working, and how you need to be structuring. Okay? Top of your legs need 100 PV on ER, and the share value is $50. Okay? We're going to move on. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So Rising Star, again, it's looking at your legs. To earn one share of Rising Star, which is how much? $50. $50. You need to have three legs growing. Each of those legs have to be doing how much at the top? 100. 100 ordered through ER. ER. Okay, so three legs. Three friends are like, yes, and they get their kit, and they're like pumped up, and they get on ER, and they love the product, and they're ordering. Three, that's what it takes to get the first share. $50 bonus on top of whatever else you've got going on. Just a flat out bonus. You'll notice on your check, it's like its own line item, okay? Three friends doing 100 PV, okay? Remember, you're in here in the middle, you've got your 100 going on. You've got three friends right here doing 100. They do each need to have a total of their OGV. OGV stands for? I love that we have like six different definitions for that. Can I just really ask you? Overall group volume, organizational group volume. I may not know which one is right, but it's one of those. Um, we'll say overall group volume. I think it's organizational group volume. Is it organizational? Anyway, it's OGB. Okay, so you gotta have OGB. So now it could be that Sally is doing 100 PV on ER, but maybe Sally really loves the product and Sally's doing 300 on ER, and that's okay. She has to be doing at least 100, and her whole team, which could just be her, has to be doing at least 300. Does that make sense? Yes. So this could be Sally and two enrollments. Sally sold two kits this month. Did I call her Sally a minute ago or am I making up names? No, I'm no, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, so it could be that Sally has done 100 PV order herself and sold two kits. Could be that Sally loves her oils and she did a 300 PV order this month, but at least 100 was on ER. Y'all follow me? Okay, you need to have that happen three times in your list. Okay, kind of doable. If you did like a really great class and you had a lot of duplication going on, you could totally be enrolling several people at a time and they could be bringing friends to the class as well. Okay, this is not, in, this can happen month to month. You can get Rising Star one month and not qualify the next month. It's all the next, it's okay. You are eligible for Rising Star in your first 24 months. Okay, so this is a, it's a limited thing basically because they want you to get to silver, past that, and the silver bonuses are even better, okay? So they, they don't want you just to be sitting on this forever, they want you to move on, okay? But you can do this 100 PV right here. Um, 100 PV with 300 times three. Let's do some math, are you ready? I'm gonna make you do math today. All right, so if I'm doing 100, 
And this leg's at three, and this one's at three, and this one's at three. What's my volume? My OGV is 3,000. I mean, sorry. 1,000, right? You with me? Overall for the whole team, it's going to be 1,000. I've done 100, and we've got three legs going. With me? I've got one share. <laughs> Worth how much? $50. Okay, so just for having this little bit going on, I get an extra 50 bucks on my check. The next step is an additional two shares. How much would that be? $100 plus my one share, which was gives me $150. Bonus, extra free money, right? Okay, and that comes when I have two more legs growing that have how much on the front? How much are they doing at the top? 100 on ER. And their total volume is 500 each. Okay, now again, this could be Susie, and Susie could be like a crazy orderer and just doing 500 every month, and that's fine. Or Susie could have gotten one kit herself and sold four kits. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you guys with me? Y'all yes. following along? Okay, now here's the neat thing about Rising Star that I love, is that maybe Sally, the first month that Sally started sharing, Sally just loved her oils, and she told a few friends, and they were like, Sally, these oils are amazing. I totally want to do this. And Sally said, let's, let's have a class. Let's just teach a few friends how to use their oils and what they can do with them. And their friends were like, awesome. And they held a class and they grew. Maybe Sally is actually now one of these legs. Okay? And you've enrolled some new people over here. And they're starting to grow. You guys see that? Yes. These positions are not attached to a person. <laughs> they're flexible. Does that make sense? So ideally what you would want is for these people to begin to shift and grow more, right? You want them to duplicate, you want them to hold their own classes, then to teach their own stuff and to be helping their own friends. You don't want to have to be doing all of this. So at this point, I've got this going on. I've got three shares worth how much? $150, right? Two plus one is three times 50 is 150. Y'all still with me? Yes. Okay. Um, some of you are like, what is happening right now? <laughs> um, that's okay. A lot of you are feeling it. You can watch it again. Okay, so here, when we just had our blue people in place, um, we had, what was our volume? What was my overall? I had 1,000, right? Okay, right here, now I've expanded or shifted or some changes happened. Now what do I have right here? 1,000, and this was how much again? So what's my team's OGB? What's my rank? Did you guys catch that? Yes. Okay. I, I forgot to tell you that you were a star here. I totally missed that part. Um, so we went from star to senior star, and we got ourselves a $150 bonus. Sweet. That's good stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. You guys, can I see thumbs? This is my math school. Are we good? Yes. You don't have to be a thumb if you're not good. It's okay. You can be like this. Okay. So next, we are sharing, we are loving, and they are sharing, and they are loving, and they are telling people, and it is growing like gangbusters, okay? And so because I know the royal crown needs me to have some wit going on, I'm not, I'm not smushing everybody and having everything happen over in one section. I'm building wide, okay? So when I have new people joining, maybe there are new children for me. They're staying out here. People have shifted. Sally like was awesome last month and or four months ago, and now she's like amazing. She's doing awesome over here, and I have two more. So how many total legs do I have going on here? That sounds familiar, right? Okay. Um, and so let's look at what we have going on. We had three legs at three hundred, two legs at five hundred. That gave me three total shares. Now I've got two more legs going. How much do they each have to have on top? 100 PB on ER. What does their volume have to be here? 1,000. And so they're both at 1,000. So if I can grow seven legs out to this point, how many shares is just adding this piece worth? Three shares, which is how much? $150. How many total shares am I adding out? For how much money? $300. $300. You guys seeing how quick this can happen? Mm -hmm. But let's look at this again. All right, so I had a thousand OGB here. I had another thousand OGB here. How much do I have going on here? Two thousand. How much OGB do I have? <laughs> what does executive require me to have? Two what? Two legs. Two legs, legs, at, two legs at one thousand. So I have just structured myself to executive. Right. With a whole lot of promise. Yes. Yes. Do you guys see that? Yes. How many of you rising star makes sense for the first time ever? 
Anyone? Yeah. 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 Anyone? How many of you have a better understanding of Rising Star? Does that make sense? Okay. So listen, Rising Star, I will be really honest with you. When I first started building, I literally had videos of me teaching my team where I'm like, and then there's the rising star, which that's just dumb. Don't pay attention to that. And I, I didn't understand it. I, had no, I was like, that is so complicated. I don't understand. It has to be like through these shares. And this, you have to leave that part of your videos. But um, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, here. There you go. Um, so, so listen, it's okay if we don't understand pieces of the compensation plan. I think this is possibly one of the most complicated parts. Um, but when you break it down, it's not that complicated. It's pretty simple and it's incredibly wise because it's teaching me exactly what I need to do to grow, okay? Got one more piece of this for you because I wanna talk to you about your circle of influence and how you grow seven legs. Anybody else like, great, Aaron, that's awesome. That looks awesome, but how, how does that ever happen? Anybody feel that way? How do you grow seven legs? Okay, I need to wait. Yes. Um, how do you do that? How in the world do you grow that far? So this is what I teach my team. It's pretty basic. And I've seen other leaders teach variations of this as well. We talk about circles, okay? We talk about circles, um, you can call them groups, um, and whatever you want to call that, but we all have circles of influence somewhere. We all have people who we are connected to in different ways. When I got started, I had been in pharmaceutical sales. Then I had been teaching high school. Um, after that, I came home a, a little bit and I was doing photography on the side. Um, and which is, I mean, I think through all of that, the Lord has used every piece. Crystal talked about this this morning, that there's purpose in all the paths that we've walked and he's used every bit of that to grow me to where I am today. Um, so don't get angry about a piece of your path that makes sense. But each of those, you know what they became to me? They became different circles of people. So when I started talking about wheels, that very first group of people that came to me, they were all mamas from a photography group I was in. So it made sense for me to keep them together as they enrolled and to let them be a circle. But we all have so many circles. And every time I do this, I try to add to my list. Um, we have so many circles that we are connected to. We have our family. We have church, coworkers, neighborhood, mom's group. You have your school. You may be in school. Your kids may be in school. You may have kids in multiple schools. You may have moved at some point, so you have different school networks for your families. We have online communities. You may have a point of influence, like a blog, or um, if you're a photographer and have like a big Instagram following or something like that, you could have that as well. You might have a community group that you work with, volunteer work. You could just do a booth at a health fair, and that's a brand new circle of people that you would never have known before. And then childhood friends, maybe people that you've not really connected with who become a new circle for you as well when they, you know, when your Facebook brings us all back together as it does. So what I teach people to do is to manage those circles. And so what I want you to do is think through what your circles might be. And if you are having trouble coming up with your circles, get with a friend who's here with you and have them help you brainstorm that. Okay, because sometimes we just see the things that happened in the last four days as being all the people that we're connected to, and we forget the influence we have in other places. So you guys need to consider the influence that you have with other groups. But I tell people to set up your list and to work in threes. Okay? So pick, uh, pick three at a time that you want to focus on. Maybe the three that you're most connected to. Um, if your kids play sports and you're just always sitting in the sidelines, and those are mamas that you're talking to all the time, because that's the season that you're in right now, that might be a circle that you want to work with right now. But what I recommend that you do is start sketching out what your circles could be and sketch out the people in those circles that you most like. You know, I think of this part of my life. Gosh, I just think about these three people first. Maybe they're the most fun people for you to work with. Um, maybe they're just the three most outgoing people in that circle. It could be a lot of different things. But ultimately, if you're starting from scratch with that circle, if you have not really opened your mouth and shared oils in that circle, I recommend that you go first to the person in that circle who you want to work the most closely with, okay? Um, when it came to family for me, I went to my mom and said, you know, I know this thing is kind of new to you, but I have family members who are already asking me questions, and I'd really love it if you'd take a look at this and consider joining with me and consider doing this with me. And she said, you know, I was actually going to ask you, I just... You know, I didn't want to um, have you think I was just jumping on it because you were doing it. And I was like, no, that's fine. Let's totally do this together. So my mom 
was the first in my family circle that I enrolled, which meant I kept her at the top. And then when my sister-in-law decided she wanted to get a starter kit, when I enrolled my sister-in-law, I just shifted that sponsor to be under my mom because that made sense. That was a circle of familiarity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then when I had a cousin or someone that would be close to that family relative, then you know I might enroll them, my mom might enroll them, my sister might enroll them, but they can always get nestled in that little family group. Does that make sense? Um, likewise, when it comes came to that mo that mom photographer group that I was in, um, the there were several people that joined right around the same time. But there was one that I was closer to at that point, and it just made sense for her to be the head of that family, that little piece of our family. And so instead of saying, as some people do, and and, and again, this is where teams all teach differently, okay? But instead of saying, gosh, if I could just have 100 PV over here, just in this leg right here, if I just have 100 PV here, I know this person's like really connected over here, but like if I could just put them here, then I could rank. Instead, I always chase relationship, always. And it's done well, okay? Um, I always chase relationship because it's never worth it to me to separate people who could work together because the idea is we duplicate ourselves and truly we want to have less work to do, okay? My team is about 12 to 13,000 people. We can only help so many. So I work with the ones I know and I help to nestle those who can work together better. Does that make sense? Um, so I do recommend from the start that you focus on three circles at a time. Now, it doesn't mean that if I'm focusing on my family, my coworkers, and let's say my kids' school. Maybe those are the three that I'm like, this is just kind of where I am right now. You know, maybe I'm working a job and, you know, taking my kid to a lot of school things. And of course, I have family who are just around me. I'm just going to focus on those three. But I may have someone in my mom's group at church who I'm like, dang, she not only needs this product, she would be a lot of fun to do this with. And I really think she would get this. I may go ahead and seek out that person, even though I'm not ready to work on that group. Because I want to go ahead and get that leg in place, get that leader of that leg loving that product, so that when other people in the mom's group see what I'm doing, I'm not like, shoot, I didn't get Mindy to sign up yet. She doesn't know about what I'm doing. I wish she did because I don't really know this other mom really well, and I don't know if I want her to be like the person that I'm most working with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you seek out those people that you really want to work with the closest at first, and just, I mean, I'm not talking about like being salesy and weird. I'm just saying... Like, hey, I really value you as a friend, and I just love spending time with you. And it would just mean a lot if you would just take a look at this thing that I'm doing because I'm kind of in a position where I feel like this is going to go somewhere, and I want to work with people that I really want to work with, and I would really love to work with you. Now, I'll be honest, I said that to some people up front, and they were like, you're crazy. And um, they didn't really jump on board. And they're like down to my levels, three, four, and five, and they're growing, and they're doing great, and they're phenomenal leaders. But I really would have loved to have them be at the top of that blessing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, seek out those people, but consider that you can continue expanding those circles over time. You may have more than nine. You may have 20. I don't know that 20 circles is manageable. <laughs> makes me like want to take a nap. Um, but that's okay. If you already have 20 circles built on your front line, by all means, keep working them as they are. If you are starting fresh or you're needing to breathe new life into your team, this is a strategy that you can employ to maybe get a little bit of control over what you have going on. So I want you guys to structure wisely with that success in mind. And I have three things for you guys to do as homework. The teacher only has to deliver homework, okay? I want you to think about your circles, just brainstorm, process through what they are, who they might be, be open to new circles. I'm always finding new circles, even for myself at this point. I will stumble into a group of people and be like, gosh, I just feel like we joined a new church. How about that? We joined a new church this year. Total new circle for me. Okay? Total new circle. In fact, no one in the church uses oils. I'm like, I failed at my job that no one in this church in town has ever done oils. Okay. A hard moment for me, but that's a new circle for me. It's new people who are hearing about what we're doing and they're interested. And so I'm expanding into that circle. Now I've got my structure in place. I have full royal structure in place at this time. I have six legs at 35. Volume. Um, and so I am not building an additional circle at this time, but I am nesting circles when it makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, I'm not building wider because I can, I'm, can only manage so much, but I'm working with leaders who are working with me and we're, we're restructuring, I mean, we're um, nesting circles. 
I want you to strategize your next focus and figure out what that needs to be. Do you need to better manage a circle that you have? Do you need to, have you tapped the beginning of a circle and you haven't gone further with it? Have you tapped a circle and you haven't told that person that you want to work with them because they're awesome and you're doing this really fun thing and you just want to help empower them to do that? Maybe that's what you need to do next, okay? Maybe you need to reach out and you need to open a new circle, okay? I want you to think about what your strategy should be and I want you to plan for success because I will tell you that when you start this thing out with the end in mind, it is so much easier throughout the way to have that long-term plan in place and to see where you're going. I do not want you guys scrambling along the way and trying to figure out your next step. For a long time now, I had known my next step before it even came to me. Before that person even enrolled, I knew exactly where they needed to go, okay? Because I've got my structure in such a place, I know where my groups are and where my people are, that when someone comes to me, I'm like, oh, oh, well, you know so-and-so, okay? Let's make sure you guys can work together. I always empower that leader. Hey, I wanted you to know I'm connecting you with so-and-so. Um, I, you know, I would like you to help me educate her and all of this. And then we work together with her. We get together and sit around the table and we talk together and that becomes a team effort. Does that make sense? Okay, is that good? Yes. I feel like you got some stuff to do? Yes. You do the homework. Yes. Do it? Okay. I want to hear from y'all. Okay? I did not put my info up there like Tina did. That was smart. Um, but y'all can reach me on Facebook. I'm facebook.com slash Erin Rogers. I'm not a football star. Um, but E-R-I-N Rogers, R-O-D-G-E-R-S. Um, if you friend me, just shoot me a PM and tell me who you are. Um, that'd be awesome. Um, but I'd love to, I'd love to get to know you guys and cheer you guys on on your journey. So thank you. I appreciate it.